Before we get started, safety first, make sure that you have your, your, your back end on jack stands um, and chalk your front wheels. You cannot have the emergency brake applied for this procedure because we're re gonna be working on the rear brakes. So you wanna chalk your front wheels, use whatever chalk you want. I've got my couple of two by fours under the front tires and I've uh, put them firmly in place with a sledgehammer. You know, just tap them in there real tight. Then what I do is I jack up the back end, set the majority of the weight on the jack stand so it's nice and stable, but keep your jack underneath there um, just as an added precaution. And then before you get any of your limbs under the vehicle, uh, give the vehicle a good shake test to make sure it's stable, okay? So for any of you that are not familiar with brake terms, maybe you haven't done it before, uh, there's a few key components here. Very much like your front brakes, you've got the rotor, that's the round part, right? Then you've got the cal this is the caliper, okay? This is very different from your front calipers because you've got your uh, anti-lock brake system and you've also got your emergency brake uh, in one unit, okay? So be a little bit more careful here. There's a little bit more that you can damage back here, so just be mindful of what you're doing, okay? You can see the pads in here and you can see this retaining clip here that prevents some vibration. There's also a little spring clip here that we'll talk about once we get it taken apart. But uh, really simple job here. You should not have to bring this to a shop to do it. Um, I just did the other side, so I'm showing you guys on this side. I did the other side, it took me 15 minutes tops. Um, so this one will actually probably go quicker now that I'm familiar with it. But anyway, so you've got your caliper, you've got your rotor, um, and you've got your brake pads in here, okay? So, what I wanna show you is a few things, a few simple tools that you'll need. You'll need a pry bar. A simple screwdriver will work if you don't have a pry bar like this. Uh, you're going to need a seven millimeter Allen wrench. And what I use is a box wrench to put on the handle there for extra leverage to get those bolts loose. And of course, whatever device you use to take your tire off, uh, I use a, a speed wrench here. But you're also gonna need some new pads. So I'm just using AC Delco all ceramic pads. Um, use whatever you have. These are kind of mid, mid grade. They're not the professional grade, but they're not the cheapest one either. Um, but anyway, make sure you have the right ones before you even take your, your brake assembly apart. Just make sure these match. You should have one with a spring on it, and you should have one without a spring on it for each side. Okay, so it's a, it's a set. Um, and I'll show you what the old pads looked like from the other side. Here's the old pads from the other side. You can see they're, they're pretty much shot. There's not much left there. And you can compare those to the thickness of the new ones. Okay. So again, um, take note of which one has the spring on it. In this case, um, the one with the spring is in the back, so just remember that your spring is in the back Before you take those pads out and forget Obviously just do one side at a time and then you can go look at the other side if you forget Okay, so let's get started. Oh, and you're gonna need a c-clamp uh, This may be a little bit controversial So we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but I'll show you where you may need this. Okay um, Probably the most exp uh, most important thing for this is your needle nose pliers. Um, and let's go from there. Okay, so for the spring clip, you can use the pry bar to get it out, or you can use the needle nose pliers. Uh, and we will be using this for a couple things. So kind of keep your hand in between your, uh, your face and the spring so it doesn't go flying. But all you really have to do is pull it out there, and that'll pop down, and then uh, pull it out there. Hang on to this because you will need it. Um, the brake pad kit does not come with a new one of these. So hold on to that spring. Okay. The next thing you're going to want to do is back behind here. Let's get you guys in closer. Back behind here is a couple bolts that you're going to have to take out. There's one here and one here. Okay and they have little caps on them to keep dust and dirt out. So just take those caps off. You can just use your thumbnail or a little screwdriver if you don't have a thumbnail. Take those caps off, hold on to those. And what you're gonna wanna do is get your seven millimeter Allen wrench in there. Sometimes you gotta push this little hose out of the way. 
And what I get again, what I do is I use my box end wrench for a little extra leverage, and they're really not that tight. Um, so then I can just flip my wrench around and take it out pretty quick. Let me move my hand out of the way so you can see it. And what you want is you just want these threads to clear here. So once those threads are clear, maybe a couple more turns on there. Once those threads are clear, that just slides out. You can just slide it out with your thumb. Okay. Or you can get something else in there. But that just slides out. And just keep it in there. That, that'll prevent you from losing it. You don't have to take that bolt all the way out because this whole assembly is just going to slide out towards you. So we'll do the bottom one real quick. Alright, those threads are clear. I'm just gonna push the bolt out a little bit. Alright, there we go. Alright, so now you're just gonna slide the whole caliper directly off. Give it a little wiggle if you have to. All right. Now, you don't want to let this hang from the hoses. Uh, there's a couple of different things here. There's a hydraulic hose. There's your connection there for your emergency brakes. Um, and then back here, this, this little tube here is pretty fragile, so be careful you're not banging stuff on that. But what I do is I just turn this over and let it rest right here on top of the rotor. Okay? Pull you guys back a little bit. All right, so now some of the pieces may fall out, but there's your there's your pads. Okay, we'll just leave those there for a second. What we want to focus on now is getting this cylinder recessed. Obviously, your old pads are a lot skinnier than your new pads, so this is going to have to be uh, back in. Now, with your front brakes, most people use a C-clamp and they'll clamp it across there. Uh, there's a couple reasons why you don't want to do that, okay? Um, because you're damage it, and obviously, and this is kind of new for newer cars, so if you're old school mechanic, this is gonna be new to you. This has these little indents right here, and you're gonna have to actually rotate this clockwise, and it will screw in. Now before you depress the piston on your caliper to put the new pads in, you're going to want to find your uh, brake fluid reservoir. It's right next to your battery under the hood. Take that cap off. Set it somewhere you're not going to lose it because you don't want to lose that. But what's going to happen is some of your fluid's going to come back up, so you need to let some air in here. Um, you will notice as you depress that caliper, when you come back up here, this fluid level will be higher. If you're already close to the top, you may want to put some rags down below so you don't get brake fluid down on your exhaust manifold or anywhere down there. Um, but I think I should be okay so I'm not going to put a rag down there. So you'll see it here in a second. Now there is a specialty tool for this. Um, I'll look it up on Amazon and let you guys know how much it costs just so you have an idea of the price. If you like specialty tools, go ahead and spend that money. Um, but you can do the same thing with a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay, So you're going to grab in between those two indents and you're going to turn clockwise. And it really doesn't it really doesn't take a whole lot. The hardest part is just holding the thing still while you're doing it. See that? You can just get a good half turn on it at a time. And go clockwise. Okay. So. In other words, towards your right hand side. And that's going to be screwing the, uh, the piston back in. Okay. You're going to get to a point where you can feel a hard stop. I think on the other side, I got seven or eight full rotations. And there we go. I can feel that stop. So when you get to that stop, if you back it up a little bit, and then come back, I mean, you, you'll feel it. It's a very hard stop. So that's what you want to do. Now, uh, from experience, at this point, if you tried to now put it over the brand new pads, it's not going to fit. 
Okay, this is where I warned you it might get controversial. Some people would tell you not to do use a C-clamp on there, so I would use your own discretion. But what I found on the other side was after I screwed it in, I still could not get the proper clearance over the new pads. Um, and I screwed it in and out a couple of times, it just wouldn't go in any further. So then what I did was I that at that point I used my C-clamp. Now, you're going to want to be very careful doing this because, let me see if I can turn this around so you can see the back side. That's plastic right there, okay? So if you're squeezing against that, you don't want to risk cracking that. Um, I haven't priced this assembly, but I'm sure it's not cheap. Um, so what I do is just set that up there. And again, do not uh, screw this very tight. So if it feels like it's hard to go, just don't even do this at all. Uh, you may have to get a different tool. Um, they do have, if you feel better, if you don't want to put pressure on the back side, if you feel better, they do have a piece that you can buy from any auto parts store that fits in here. And it has a couple ears that, that stick out here. And then it has a very much like a C-clamp that, that uh, drives that cylinder in. And that way you're not putting any pressure on the back. But you can see here, after you after you turn that to get it all the way down the piston um, then you can recess it a little bit more and again I'm not putting any pressure on here at all I'm, I'm just turning this thing with two fingers okay and you'll feel it go all the way in and you can see it going down there and that's it once you start getting a little bit of resistance you're fully down okay again be very careful there um, but that's what I found worked for me and the other side went quite well. So now you can see it's, it's fully recessed and here's the fun part. We'll actually take the old pads out, put the new pads in. So there's the old pads. It just slides out of that little channel. New pad just pops in. The back one, same thing. And notice that spring is on the back side okay so now all we're gonna do whoop, dropped our pad push those push those bolts all the way out get your pads in there and you're just gonna slide it back over the top of the whole thing okay then very simple just get these bolts holes lined up. You may have to play with it a little bit again because of that little spring in there. It wants to push it away from the pads. But just get the bottom one lined up first. Now we're grabbing on our threads. So get that one going in. Don't turn it, don't tighten it all the way. Before you get it all the way tight, do the top one. Get that one going in there. There we go. Now you will see a little gap here. When you tighten this down, basically just turn it until it stops. Okay. There will be a gap there because that's as as this uh, piston uh, compresses and retracts while you're using your brakes. This caliper mechanism has to slide back and forth. Okay. So just go until it stops, and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead, get my box end wrench, and then I'll just put a little, a little bit of extra stuff on there. If you have a torque wrench and you know how to use it, and you want to use the torque wrench and look up the torque specs and all that, have at it. But I just kind of do it by feel. All right, uh, make sure you put your caps back on. Or the next time you go to do this, you may have a lot of junk in there and and uh, won't be as easy. Okay. Uh, and then last but not least, get your spring assembly here. So what I found here was, um, I was anticipating having to use a pry tool, but I found out it's actually pretty easy to do it by hand. So what you want to do is get this side on the outside, get the bottom in there, and then so that's in the hole, right? And then put that top hole put the top one in the hole and then with your thumb you can just pull that out it's really not a very strong spring um, and that's it that's all there is
Um, so at that at this point we're going to make sure we put the reservoir cap back on remember that make sure you put that back on um, or you're not gonna have a good day anyway that's it put your tires back on and go test drive your brand new brakes